In the heart of Chicago, amidst the towering skyline, lies a tale of bloodshed and betrayal. It's a story that stretches back over a decade. The story of NLMB, KTS, and Black Mob. <laughs> KTS, known for their ruthlessness and fearlessness, they carved their name into the streets of Chicago's underworld. But it was the infamous McDonald's incident that catapulted them into notoriety. Hey, ain't no one zipping us. Don't be scared, Lebron. Don't be scared, Lebron. Black Mob was another formidable force in Ops of NLMB. So now, into Shooter Shells, a name whispered around the city. He struck fear into the hearts of NLMB, taking out four members. Shoot a motherfucking shells, Mr. Death 150. Yeah, I know I be catching y'all stupid. You know? And I got that shit. But you know, everybody telling me to leave the, um, that other shit alone, just focus on this music. And they right. So I'm gonna do that, you know? Stay out the way. Cause, you know, they wanna see a nigga down. I ain't gonna be booked forever. You know? That's what they wanna see. Shout out them. them. But every action begets a reaction. And as NLMB's losses mounted, so too did their thirst for revenge. Forming alliances and forging new bonds, NLMB set their sights on KTS, Black Mob, and all of their other ops. The streets of Chicago became a battleground with no end in sight to the cycle of violence, more so over East. Hey, you vibing it, bro. Talking about that's me. That's not me, y'all. Oh, what that one, too? Oh, what? Why you laughing? Why you laughing? Oh, what that one, too? I don't look, though, that that ain't me, nigga. Why you just lying? You just murdered the weed, like. You don't even love Lil Dirty. Why you just lying with Lil Dirty like that, bro? You don't even love him. Join us as we delve deep into the heart of darkness, where loyalty is bought with blood and survival is a game of inches. This is the story of KTS, Black Mob, and NLMB, The War Over East. And we back at it with another one, Drillers and Trappers. Y'all know how we get it in, and today, in, in Chicago with it. This time, we about to cover the entire KTS family. KTS Dre, KTS Vaughn, then the Big Stepper, KTS Vinny. But before we get into it, you already know what I'm about to say. You already know what I'm gonna need y'all to do. I need y'all to hit that like and that subscribe. Smash that notification bell, share this shit. Let everybody know it's gang gang, we in this bitch. We in Iraq with it. Let's go. Let's start with KTS Vaughn first. Vaughn's birth name is Devon Davis. He is famous in the public as KTS Vaughn, but KTS stands for Kill to Survive. Vaughn was born on December 1st, 1993 in Chicago, Illinois. Like his parents, he was from the Christianity religion and he was American nationality. Sadly, he died at the age of 21 years old. Okay. A lot of people know about Cutthroat Vaughn. Uh, he was kind of hard, hard body when it came to the drill culture. His sound was a little dark, if you ask me. He was very, very aggressive in the drill culture. Unfortunately, he lost his life due to gun violence. A lot of us seen internet beefs he didn't hear with like No Limit, uh, Lil Herb, Lil Bibby, Capo, and people like that. He completed his basic studies at a local school. Later, he took the admissions of his higher studies. He developed an interest in singing and rapping at a young age. KTS Vaughn 
was born to father Vincent Davis Sr. and mother Vanya Sylvester. KTS Vaughn also had six brothers, KTS Dre, Rashawn, Shawnique, Johnne, Earl, and Vincent Jr. And he also had one sister who went by the name of Nikki. Black, black, cut the more block. At an early age, Vaughn would hop off the porch and began being active in the streets. He was a known feared hitter in the Terra Town area, and he was a feared KTS representative. Come on, two four, this is running, folks. Let me see what it say. Put an S sign that, folks. It's they blue camera. Definitely not our Definitely yeah, McDonald's right what there. Is? It's early. Who does this? It's two four. Let me see my shot. Yeah, Let me see. This two four. Yeah, on ass, man. What's up, man? Oh, say knife and asses. Niggas, shit, Niggas in loose. trucks riding What's past. Get your what this party. is? Y'all know who stole this is. Yes, it's definitely. Yeah, yes. Y'all remember this face, don't y'all? Oh. Okay. Look at them guys in that right truck. They see us. Wherever the f they is. Yes, yeah, and we out here. Go on here, bro. Watch him. Boy, watch they. Uh. Oh, y'all know what it is, boy. He come out here. They ain't out here. It's dry as hell out here. Look at my shawties. Ooh. I don't know these niggas with them Uchi Wally's out here, man. Where them niggas at? They was out here somewhere. Look at this. They write shit like this on the wall. That's what they write on their walls. <laughs> they look at Don't be on shit, boy. We be out here. It's late. Now niggas ain't out here. These ain't the hours. No niggas come outside. We walking in now, too. Check us out, just in case y'all think I'm dolo. Yeah. And niggas ain't on the nine. Just in case. It's not five in the morning. It's not five in the morning. It's not no shit like that. It's 10 o'clock. See where the fuck is y'all at? It was said that KTS Dre and KTS Vaughn were both GDs, but their father, Vinny, was a conservative vice lord. But Vinny had a lot of respect in the hood. It's said to say that KTS's biggest ops was NLMB, and they had a long, long wavering feud that went on for years. And even with the bloodshed on both sides, throughout the depths, you can see nothing but dissing on both sides, before and after. So what's the history between the lake and Town B? How long that shit going on? So basically, like y'all generation just jumped into that shit, and it, it was what it was. Nah, hell no. Nah. Ain't just jumping into shit. It wasn't like that. Hell no. Nah. How close are y'all to Tear Town? That's the hood. Mm, so my fuck's that close. It's that. That's the hood. That's the hood. From Yates to the water. So when did shit go left? That's it. That's it. Then left. Now it's said that KTS Dre was responsible for six bodies. And those would be Gotti, Rock, Alamo, Big Los, Kobe, and Faro. And it's also said that he had an attempted murder attempt on G Herbo. For all you ass niggas know we ain't smoking packets with. <laughs> Dead man, free smoke to anybody. Any block. 
Yeah, that nigga came through last night for like three, four in the morning. Blowing the whole chopper doing 70 miles per hour. Ain't hit nobody. And crash. No way. Get them, man. Look at that. Yeah, they, they just pop. Hey, 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 why niggas in the car snitching on us? Hey, this nigga in the car snitching on us, man. Pointing at us, man. Niggas in the car snitching on us, man. Got the laws hot. Ass niggas. Man, it's out here, man. I don't know what's going on, G. Crazy. Hey, Jimmy, 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 This extended Kobe, you ain't never said cut those smoke extended Kobe. Kobe stick. I ain't even like it. Don't sound like you're gonna like the whole way through. Cause I told him, like, why you, why the fuck you taking last time? He said, tell me. Why they do Kobe like that? Oh, watch me smoke on his bed. Kobe hit the out before the O. I'll be smoking no no limit, bro. And I got them fades on. Good morning. Wake up, smoke big Kobe steak. Blood money. Ah. Sip your home. I'm drinking your home. That's how much blood Kobe had on that bus stop. Blood money. Uh, Fuck niggas. I don't the best niggas, man. Out here sipping on your dead home. That's how much blood pee we had in front of McDonald's. We do this for more block, man. Mo Block, happy birthday, love, bro, man. I know it's shit on 29. You did that early, though, man. Shout out PBE, PLD, man. CTG. The CEO, Day Love Ho, come turn up Mo Block, man. 
Real killers, real hitters out there, man. That Jays, John O'Fan, that Gotti. It's a win, it's mama. Shit. Turn on one time, though, man. I'll be back there on the track. It said that KTS was nothing but a group of killers. Nothing more, nothing less. All they used to love to do was slide day and night, night and day. They would stalk their ops, run their ops down. Purposely go through their neighborhoods looking for beef, looking for niggas to shoot. Anything that had to do with inflicting pain towards the ops, KTS was with it at any cost. KTS Ron was such a savage. He would even slap one of his own members of his hood for merching on someone who she shouldn't have mentioned. He didn't care if you were a man or a woman. If you disrespected KTS, you had to pay regardless. Sorry, I asked you that. Yeah. Okay, so there was a video of KTS Vine, you know, slapping you for what? What's the reason? The narrative that they gave was I was a thought that he snapped to put something on Ronnie. Okay. But that's not what happened. Um, people gotta understand that I wasn't a female from KTS from for being pretty. I wasn't anybody. Like I was a part of the hood. Like right. I was a real soldier. So the same that happened to the happened to God. Right. Um, I didn't necessarily get smacked <clears throat> for. Merchant on him, it was the situation just period. The issue was when I started gang banging, like I said, I didn't come, I, I, I grew up in a hood, but I didn't, my parents is not hood. Like, I grew up in a mansion on 67th and Cookie. I didn't grow up in a project. So, a lot of shit was different to me, but it was a lifestyle I chose. So, when I started gang banging, I just thought because I was from somewhere, you know how you get people merchant on people? Mm -hmm. I'm my little dumb shit, ain't know no better. Like, I just was outside one day talking to one of the guys. And I happened to say, like, on Ronnie, in a sentence, I guess they called Vaughn. I asked him, like, yeah, um, got he over here with Merchant on Ronnie. Do she know him? But I had no knowledge of none of this, you feel me? So by the time I got to the trap, because it do hit different, I lived, I was living with them. So um, I, that's why I had my school uniform on. I snuck out the house, told my mom I was going to school, and I went on the block. So um, I got violated. I did not just get smacked. Okay. Nobody just smacked me, and people gotta understand the video still went on. Okay, y'all know I ain't smack his back. Hey, so y'all know what the time it is, man. Walking in there once again. We hope a nigga pop out so we can light they whole ass oh, up. Back, they go to police. I ain't gonna look at they ass. Y'all see him? <laughs> is it talking they about? They watching the shit out of us. Man. Oh, watch, watch, watch TV, back. fuck. <laughs> they actually hop on us. We ain't doing shit. We ain't shit. no nothing. We ain't no nothing, man. <laughs> Told town already famous, damn, it. God damn it! They threw him, boy. It was the police, boy. They got the laws out, huh? Helicopters, Helicopters where he at? They out here. Boy, them know what's finna happen. This Kofax, stupid dry. Some stupid dry. I see a love body down though. I was only seeing one person like they were walking that way. Me and Big Bro, man, real niggas do real things, man. Let me y'all know what it is, man. Me and my little brothers, he real sis. You see him, you gonna see me, man. You pull it, you gonna see slugs. Oh, back. Hey, look, man. They ain't even take that picture they put out there. This little magic big some stuff. Ain't man. nobody even take that picture. That was yesterday. Now, this today, we walking in there. And this shut on. Let me get the phone. Let me get the time for you, people. Hold on, wait. Get the time. It's bro. 8. <laughs> Hold on, let me get the. 8.33. And hey, we up to now, my nigga. It all would come to an end one day on June 23rd, 2015. It said that KTS Vaughn was near the 7500 block of South Ellis Avenue in Chicago. It said that he was asked if he was KTS Vaughn. As he turned around, he got shot straight in the chest and collapsed. And this is where KTS Vaughn would meet his day. He, he would sadly pass away at the age of 21.
and his suspected killers are supposedly dead. One of the shooters they said was NLMB Mad Max, who was later on shot by Hell Rail from KTS. So that was the end of that chapter, but the KTS saga will continue. <coughs> The only people outside, these no limbs, the, on that collar. Get it back, squad it back. Get it back, get it back. And your girl on the back. If you call, don't call back. <laughs> Squally Mad, Squally Mad, hit your bitch, come back. Oh, look at that. Come on, 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 the cut. And we was on the hit, boy. Y'all lucky y'all that ain't out here. And I seen some of you niggas just ride past in them cars. I don't know if that was you or not, Lil Herb. Yo, this was in one of them cars, man. Huh. Woo! Oh! Get that ass on camera. Get that ass on camera. We're gonna take it slow. Up to nine. Buddha Z. Y'all don't need no LeBron. They ain't gonna tell y'all who he is. Oh, look at Bunch of niggas. Nah, I'm gonna fucking dread. That's how he knocked the dreads out. We see you just hit. That's another one of y'all stores. We just really up to nine. Well, five is. Up too. First thing he do, niggas hitting alleys and shit. Ain't no motherfucker worried about that shit. All y'all gotta do is start blowing. Because a lot of people always ask me about this other guy uh, that's affiliated with those guys. Actually, it's the father of those guys by the name of Vinny. A lot of people know him as Cutthroat Vinny. Um, I talked to a lot of people and asked them, was he really part of the Cutthroat? Some people told me, yeah. Some people told me, no, the Cutthroat part is just something that the media put on it. But a lot of people told me, yeah. But Cutthroat Vinny is actually the father of Cutthroat Vaughn uh, and Cutthroat Dre. Uh, he actually lost his life due to the violence in Chicago, too. It's sad, yeah. Think about that. A dad and a son. That shit, like, very crazy if you ask me. But uh, a lot of people ask me about that. Today, we're going to take that to the board. I'm going to give you a little information on that shit. After the death of his son, KTS Vaughn, it's said that Vincent Vinny Davis Sr. would actually go out sliding. And it's alleged that he would take out at least one or two people. It's not known from what set or what gang they were from, but that was alleged. Now, once all of this takes place, he's actually gunned down at the age of 43. So, the official police report states about 4.30 p.m., the 43-year-old Davis was sitting in a vehicle with a 22-year-old woman when someone opened fire, hitting Davis multiple times and the woman in the chest, authorities said at the time. Davis, known by friends as Vinny, lived in the 7500 block of South Evans, he died at the scene at 5 p.m., according to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. The woman was taken in critical condition to Christ Medical Center in Oakland, police said. About two weeks after the shooting, Murray was arrested and charged with robbing someone near a school or place of worship on the same block. Okay, Vinny was in a car with a woman, all right? I believe they were in a car. I believe it was 4.25 p.m. So this is like the afternoon, evening. It's like a mixture. It's almost getting into five and six, almost getting into the evening and shit like that. So, 
You know, this is like 420 for having the afternoon slash evening and shit like that. Uh, the police is claiming that on July 25th, July 25th, my bad on that six, 2016, this was on the 6600 block, I believe, uh, 6600 block of South Michigan, okay? South, we're gonna go Michigan for that, okay? And I believe the 6600 block South Michigan, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's the Park Manor neighborhood in Chicago. Park Manor. That's the Park Manor neighborhood in Chicago. They saying that Vinny was sitting in the car with a woman when a couple of guys approached the car, okay? Now, this is what the paperwork says, okay? It says that Vinny was sitting in the car with another woman at 425 in the afternoon evening-ish when a couple of guys ran up on that car. Black, 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 black. But before we get into the blacking, okay? That's what I thought instantly that they opened, they ran in. But from the reports that I read in, you know, it says that someone opened up the door. Then they got the blanket. Black, 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 black. They get the blinking all over the place, right? Now check this out. Hold me up. Hold up. Hold up. They get the blinking. That woman was in the driver's seat. She was driving. That woman was shot three times. She was so messed up, she still got a bullet lodged in her kidney. She has one of those colossal bags uh, that she's gonna have on her body for life, okay? Vinny was shot five times in that car. Vinny was killed, he lost his life, okay? All right, he was killed, okay? Now, this is the thing that throws me off. According to the police, the other guy who was there with the guy who was shooting, allegedly punched Vinny, okay? He punched Vinny. After they shot that man all that time, somebody punched him, okay? Witnesses who was around and witnesses in the backseat of that car told the police all this, okay? All right? The guy who actually did this was caught, okay? The guy who's actually accused of doing this, he was actually caught. His name is Devante, okay? His name is Devante. And I believe he was only 19 years old. I'm not sure if he was one of their friends, if he was like a op, if he was someone that turned different. Some people say he was from a rival gang and shit like that. I don't want to just put that up there because I can't guarantee that. But some people say he was a rival gang member and shit like that when all that happened right there. But uh, I want to tell you guys there's something that's real to me, man. When I look at this, I can't really give you a conclusion because his killer was caught, so we already know what happened. But I want to be honest with you guys. This is very sad. This is one of the saddest stories in the drill coaches of all time because uh, not only was it dead, not only was one son, but two sons. That's like, that's, 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 that's like three generations of men um, that were all lost to the streets. After the death of Vinny, this will leave KTS Dre by himself. He already lost his younger brother in 2015. He just lost his father in 2016 so now it was up to kts dre to continue to weigh the kts flag and to get even more reckless and ruthless still out here man y'all talking about gang squad pop in block block more block pasto gang y'all know we catch a like that man get y'all goofy is up kts dre was born as Landre Sylvester in 1990 in Chicago. Nothing is really known about his education or his childhood, but he was the older brother to KTS Vaughn. The Cutthroats was infamous and known for pressing sh all throughout Terror Town. And like mentioned before, their arch rivals was NLMB. And this right here is the famous McDonald's incident where KTS Dre ended up punching No Limit Cairo in the face, breaking his jaw. He's a killer!
Please don't kill him, man. TT, kill him, boy. Y'all ain't gotta go no work, we finna get some McDonald's for we ain't on that y'all. Y'all good? These no limbs, man. These are no limbs. Damn, why you back there? He don't work here. Where you going? He don't work here. We ain't no so We all good, shorty. Shorty, y'all good. We finna get some McDonald's. Why you not? Say fuck rock. What? Say fuck rock. Don't be scared, little bro. Don't be scared, little bro. Oh, shit. Damn. Yeah, he he's like he's a broke your jaw, little fuck. Yeah, Once you came out, turned up. Damn, damn little fucking fresh. You know, that's sad, man. Come on, man. <laughs> I wanted some Mickey D's, yeah, bro. Bro. Do what y'all don't do, man. Let's go. Hey, hey man, yo, cut yo, though. Hey, KTS, hey, man. man. Cut <laughs> though, KTS. <laughs> we KTS. <laughs> no, no. Fuck up, fuck up. No, no. 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 Hey, shut up! Shut the fuck up! You too loud! Hey, be cool, don't know. Slow down. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. You gotta be. Gotta get back to the hood, man. What you got, Chuck? <laughs> KTS Drake was out for blood and vengeance and he was cut though crazy if you was a op you had to get shot that's just how it was he was out for blood anybody that got in his way he didn't care what happened to himself or to them hell real right here hell yeah he probably 45 to life y'all know that you know, I still try to call you. What was his name? Real, nigga. Stupid. He, 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 he said, Real Real did it. He said, Real Real did it. He said, I'm a state's attorney. Ooh, she said, uh, uh, You know who did this to you? He said, me called you to real and real real, real folks. Damn, fuck. I met Max was killing. He called that man by that oh, shit weird as hell, folk. The lied on this man. On the video, the nigga said to real, D and real real. Damn. That's deep, folk. She had, on, on my on my dead son, nigga. The state's attorney stopped calling me to real. She like, well, well, well what did Red Rail do? Well, uh, what did Red Rail have on? Uh, when, when you seen Red Rail, they, ooh, I'm like, my dad, I'm, I'm a guy, so I swear to God. Before he answered a bunch of questions about Red Rail, that line. Nigga. I got to stop this shit, fuck. My mama, fuck. Man, we ain't into it with no motherfucking body, man. We trying to get on with our life, man. No of us trying to get fucking 100 years for shit. For nothing. I ain't no motherfucker. Hey, Double B, you smoking kind of strong, boy. You smoking kind of strong, Double B. That man died out there. Had that man out there on the ground, dead as hell. He feeling you bitch ass niggas. You bitch ass niggas supposed to be jumping in front of bullets for scud. You bitch ass niggas, let's good die. You whole scary ass niggas. You on this big time about pasta boss top. You a fucking bitch, you whole ass nigga. I don't motherfucker. Even know you, you got royal goofy ass. Got you on here saying goofy ass shit. Your bitch can't never take back, nigga. Fuck the old nigga. Fuck you talking about you goofy ass nigga. You bitch ass hoe ass nigga. 
you talking about, nigga? Then y'all let Vaughn die while he was with y'all. How could you ever say anything gangster, nigga? Then you let your mans die right there while y'all was with him, and ain't nobody else die. You bitch ass nigga, that ain't no Chicago shit. You bitch ass nigga. Y'all let Vaughn get his ass spanked right there with y'all, nigga, live and direct, nigga. Shorty ass would have stayed with the GDs. That shit would have never. Would have never happened. You goofy ass nigga. On this bitch damn pasta name, get your bitch on. But you could be 150 O block for life. You goofy ass nigga. You bitch ass nigga. You hoe ass nigga. You bitch ass niggas be out of town, be tough as hell. Don't even be in Chicago. Y'all ass weird as hell. Hoe ass niggas just be. Y'all be internet for real. You be out of town saying shit and doing shit. And a motherfucker can't even do nothing to your bitch ass. Fuck no limit. And fuck O block nigga. Y'all be killing me with that shit, man. You niggas be far as hell out of town woofing, bro. Get y'all bitch ass on. Y'all worse than out of town niggas, man. Fuck is you on here saying pasta name, your bitch ass is right there. Then Vaughn get killed trying to party with your bitch ass. Why you trying to shake ass? They got my got folks killed, your bitch ass. You ho ass nigga. Why you one of them niggas running fast as hell, you goofy ass nigga? You bitch ass nigga. Y'all let this man pop folks, pop another motherfucker. He all on the ground. Body don't even work. Security pop him, he all on the ground. Body don't even work. Y'all bitch ass still don't do nothing. He right there on the ground, kicking it. Bitch ass. Cry baby and all type of shit on the ground. Right there, live and direct. Y'all don't do nothing. Y'all bitch ass. Let that man get shot in this shit like that. Y'all supposed to have been on point. Let them out of town niggas treat y'all. Goofy ass nigga. You on this bitch damn pasto name for another whole nother fucking goofy. Royal or goofy too, nigga. That's another goofy. But that's a whole nother issue, nigga. Ray would go live multiple times throughout the years, going back and forth with his ops, taunting each other, threatening each other, telling each other to pull up and drop lows, drop addies. In 2015, the same year that his younger brother KTS Vaughn was killed, KTS Dre was arrested for the possession of a weapon, which was a 9mm Glock. He was set on parole later for the gun conviction. On April 27th, 2020, KTS Dre was arrested for possessing a weapon and resisting police. Dre was ordered to be held in lieu of $50,000 by a judge. He was then placed under house arrest with a GPS monitoring device. Get the f*** out of the car! Dude, get the f*** out of the car, man! Sense you got a sock sock. No, it hurt. No, I'm just a couple of people. Put them on. Just give us a I'm not going to move. No, no, no. We got you. Uh, I'm saying, man. Okay, let's put them on before I go in the mail. Please just put them on your tongue. Please, I ain't going to move. No, no, you got to get it, bro. We'll get you. You need to go in. If you don't get you, then I'll You ain't working with us, all right? So, look, I'm not resisting. I know, man. I know. You got to get it. Just get him again. You got to get it. Keep it going. All right. Yeah, man. I'm not going to get you. 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 I'm not going to what you want? 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 What you on July 10th, 2020, he was released after his fiance posted a $5,000 bond. So these are just some of the numerous cases and things that KTS Dre was going in and out of Cook County for. After his release from the Cook County Jail on July 10th, 2020, at the 2700 block of South California Avenue, around 8.50 p.m., several suspects exited two vehicles and started shooting at Dre. Dre suffered as many as 64 bullet wounds to his head and other parts of his body, and 59 shell casings were found littered at the site of the shooting. When he arrived at Mount Sinai Hospital, Chicago, he was pronounced dead. Several reports claim that he was a target and they were targeting him. 
While he was being attacked, a 60-year-old woman walking with Dre was shot on her knee. The woman was sent to Stroja Hospital and was listed in good condition. Another 30-year-old woman who was passing by suffered a graze wound to her mouth. KTS Dre was one of 40 people shot in the city that day and one of those 10 victims who died from injury. Lots to cover for you on this Monday. Investigations are underway after two shooting incidents near the Cook County Jail over the weekend. WGN's Brona Tumulty joins us now live with details. Hi, Brona. Good evening, guys. Yeah, the first of those shootings happened on Saturday evening just before 9. A man named Lundry Sylvester was leaving the jail. Uh, he went by the rap name KTS Dre. He'd just been bailed out. And police say he was ambushed by two men who got out of a vehicle near the jail. Sylvester was shot as many as 64 times and pronounced dead at Mount Sinai. A 60-year-old woman who was with him was shot in the knee and taken to Stroger. A second woman in her 30s was standing nearby when that chaos broke out. She suffered a graze wound to the face. She was taken to Mount Sinai as well and both women were in good condition at last check. Bullets started flying again, though, outside the jail early this morning, just after midnight. That incident left a 25-year-old man injured. With two incidents in as many days, we asked the mayor today if security here needs to be stepped up. Well, first of all, I don't control uh, the jail or 26th Street, but obviously we're in conversation uh, with the sheriff um, and his team. We're concerned about shootings anywhere uh, across the city, and of course, uh, we're very focused on uh, what happened there, and detectives are actively at work um, identifying um, suspects, and hopefully we'll have some arrests soon. I did speak briefly via phone earlier today with the fiancé of Lundry Sylvester, and she understandably did not want to speak with us. Well, I was at the Cook County Jail, Bruno Tumulty, WGN News. Uh, we also recently seen Cutthroat Vaughn brother, Cutthroat Dre, lose his life due to the gun violence in Chicago. He actually left Cook County Jail and was shot over 60 times. The police found all kind of bullet cases and shit on the ground. This is one of the craziest things i ever seen. Think about this. The place they gonna send you to if you get caught shooting somebody, they shot somebody outside of that place. So that's just to show you, people ain't really scared about 12. Anybody could catch the blick if you ask me. And just like everybody else in this war, KTS Dre was also made fun of on social media and labeled the newest pack and everybody was saying they were smoking Dre and saying Nintendo 64 comments, it was crazy online. The disrespect level was at its highest, especially on the NLMB side of things. one with all the problems if i hear that shit one more time under my lives i'm like he look like he broke your jaw boy that shit gonna that shit gonna blow me knowing my shit ain't never been broke hey i see if my shit was broke i feel where i'd be crying or something hey he did break my y'all just be making shit up go ask that nigga if he broke my shit or not i'm trying to see I ain't got no hospital records getting my shit broke. You know when your shit get broke, you gotta wear braces, wires. You they gotta put a hole in your motherfucker in, in your face right here. It's most shit. You gotta do all types. Damn. The snitch now. Four it's over with. Damn. Can't be doing that weird. We ain't coming like that for no. You can't play favorite children with these snitches, man. Just because you like one snitch better than the other one. That's, that, that other snitch don't get no pass, folks. Get no play in my rat. <laughs> His CD don't get no blame. I don't f with that mofo. That's your boy. Cut that 
that boy. Y'all wanna hear that McDonald's story? <laughs> Come get me because I'm depressed. I really want to. No, I'm not going to say that. What kind of question is that? Get out my. You finna get your blocked. Because what kind of question is that, bitch? Bye. Yeah, please don't come in nothing stupid on my live because you don't get blocked. Cause I just don't have the time to be with you folks. What I'm gonna get drunk for? So I can get hella in my motherfucking feelings. I'm not trying to get drunk. Mm -mm. So that's the it, it is, but I'm depressed. I don't want to get lit. If I drink, it's gonna make me even more depressed. Bryce, you don't even know what the f*** I'm at talking about. You finna slide. Yeah. I... So, you know, damn near been with KTS for a long time now. Um, you know, it wasn't recent. It was a couple years back. How did you feel when you got the news that KTS Dre had been killed, you know, leaving prison? Somebody left that was some back yeah. door. And who the expects to be back door coming out the county? Right. And I don't feel no way. I ain't gonna lie. I know my niggas is soldier. I don't feel no way. Them niggas ain't hurting us. Ain't nobody hurting us. I ain't gonna lie. We was down way before we was down. We ain't had dead homies for a long time on my son. Like, I still talk. I was, when I was growing up, I always said that. Like, we ain't got home, oh, man. Oh. We ain't got no dead homies. Like, come on. Y'all in when they kill. When we lose people, we lose people years apart. Ain't no more chopping us down back to back. Yeah. And a lot ain't of Ain't nobody like chopping that. us down back to back. People catching us. Everything that happened be back though is here. I ain't gonna lie. Ain't nobody got up on us on no well. Ain't nobody getting well out here for real. Ain't nobody pulling up on us, getting like that, jumping out no cars. People is back doing game and who expects snake nobody. Right. Even though we was raised fed to be expected. Can't be there. So I don't feel no way. I love my I know my love me. And I'm standing behind those that carry the torch. I don't feel no way. I promise you that I don't know. Yeah. Definitely. You're definitely a strong female, you know, from this whole interview.
I say what can be learned from this story of the KTS family is fathers, be good fathers to your children. You know, whether you have sons, daughters, be, be in their lives. This is truly like father, like son. The father was in the streets. He was doing his thing. His sons grew up wanting to be like him. And what happened? All three of them died the same way, in the same city, in the same streets. So remember, stay positive, stay focused. Keep your head on a swivel. Lead by example. It's been real. Drillers and trappers, you already know what it is. Make sure y'all hit that like, that subscribe button, share the video. And if you want to support the channel, just keep watching the content. I got a lot more planned for this channel. New things coming in the future. Until next time, you already know what it is. Gang. You got shooter shells in the building, man. You know I'm ripping the east side, man. You know I'm coming, man. Black mob, bro. That's what's up. Shooter shells, man. You are going fucking crazy all over the internet. You dropped a video with lock of films. That motherfucker had a half a fucking million. Was that your ver first video? Hell no. Nah. I got I got other videos, but like when people put my name, sometimes they put like the shooter shells together. Or they have spaces like shooter and shell. So if you look up shooter shells together, like all my old videos gonna pop up. I got videos from like 2013, you feel me? 2015. You know, I was booked or whatever, 2014, all that shit, but yeah, I got it. That's hell no. Nah. Well, he is just 19 and charged with a quadruple homicide. This is Maurice Harris. Police say the teen, who is no stranger to law enforcement, gunned down four people near 75th and Coles last week. The reason? Police say it appears to be retaliation for his father's murder a day earlier. Man, that little bitch drop. Let's go my mail, bro. I did a PPP that didn't go through in that address. 14, 15, whatever. How the f you ain't dead yet? I was locked up. I was so cold. Shout out to the phone, man. Don't get on him back. Look, then your soft ass come out of jail for you five feet, folks. Oh, folks, what you was doing? Anytime we look. What you was doing? Anytime we get a buck with y'all at school. The time I did punch on you is when we was at picking you. What you was doing? Anytime I get a buck with y'all at school, y'all felt that pain. Why you so on him back? See, that's why I don't like adding you goofy ass. Get straight to it, man. The, the death of 150 track. Where yeah, that, where that come from, man. You know, like we've been in tour with them guys for a minute. You know, Lil Herb or whatever them, like all them Lil 150 guys. You feel me? Ain't specifically Lil Herb. We just all of them. You feel me? I ain't singling out just him. You feel me? All of them. We in tour with the whole, all of them. You feel me? Following the tragic death of KTS Vaughn in the summer of 2015, the No Limit Gang found themselves relentlessly targeted by rival ops. Shooter Shells, a prominent member, faced legal troubles after being released from jail. Okay, you do the shit with Locker, boom, and went viral, like super viral, everybody talking about it. What was the problem? Like, is it some over -E shit, beef or whatever? Like, what, what, what went on? Yeah, you know, we in tour with them. You feel me? The little herd guys or whatever, the little no, the no limits. You feel me? We in tour with them, so that's a whole bunch of east side shit going on. You feel me? I don't know too many people know what's going on. You feel me? I'm talking about cloud chasing, like I'm just trying to come out, diss the man, and you feel me? Get some cloud hell nine and shit like that. This shit been going on. Okay, okay, okay. So, would you 
like is it safe to say the east side is is like its own f Chirac it's like it's a whole different war it's a whole different shit that the city don't know about to a certain degree you can say that but uh you got niggas f with niggas from everywhere you feel me so niggas get involved from other places because you know they probably got relatives or something that's from over here you feel relatives that's more over there and they be getting involved you feel me so the thing is, everybody goes consider the east side state to the lake. Right. That's that's a lot of the, like motherfuckers that's like 20, 30. A lot of the young motherfuckers, they be talking about they from out south. You feel me? They be from out cottage or they be from out king drive. They be still talking about they from out south. Out south, that's past state. The shooter shells, filled by the desire to avenge his fallen brother Scoobs, allegedly sought revenge against Yogi, the man responsible for Scoobs' death. T -t Tell me this. Shit that's going on. That shit happened back when you said when y'all was in fifth and sixth grade, motherfuckers fight. Can this shit change now? Nah. It been, it been a lot of bloodshed though. You feel me? Even though bodies lost. Even even if motherfuckers had money, you feel me? A motherfucker do that rap beat shit. Who who's to say that if a certain nigga from down now, you feel me? It probably, you know, certain like motherfuckers that got the money, they probably don't don't be on that shit. Right. You know, risk it all and got them and get locked up, all that, but it's still gonna be niggas that ain't in, in play that got some bread that can really stop shit. They gonna be still keeping the boys. You feel me? The shit gonna keep happening, man. Motherfuckers die behind that shit. You gonna hear all his homies die, you feel me? I lost my brother to that shit, so it ain't like I could just turn my back and be like, you feel me, fuck that shit. But if I was to get on that shit, it'd be some more like, for the next generation type shit. Okay. Some, like, man, you feel me? Motherfuckers gotta learn how to forgive and let shit go because if we just keep this shit up, the shit, it's, just, it's just gonna be, a, you feel me, an everlasting cycle. It's gonna keep going on and on and on. The beef between Shooter Shells and G Herbal escalated both on the streets and in the music. G Herbal had been dissing Shooter Shells as early as 2012, sparking a lyrical exchange that continued over the years. We'll take a closer look at the disses and responses that filled this intense rivalry. Like, when he first started rapping or whatever, you feel me, when motherfuckers just local, he had mentioned my name in the track. This one, I wasn't even really rapping like that. I, you know, everybody always play around with the music, but you feel me, I wasn't taking that shit too serious. You feel me, motherfuckers me up on game. This is around the time I, I, I ended up getting shot, like 2011. It was like around that time, like 2011, 2012. He put that, um, it was to the, um, not that y'all don't really, but that I'm a boss, you feel me? He, um, he, he, he said some shit about me or whatever. Now, you're kind of your upbringing, um, you from East East Chicago, East Side. Yeah, the East Side. Yeah. Known as the what the pocket is that what they call it? Yeah. Well, kind of break down that definition of that, man, because you the first person I ever interviewed knowingly from the East Side. Oh. Uh. The East Side, man, that's it's one of the most, to me, the, one of the most stylish. To me, like, that's where the style come from. Okay. Like, the East Side. But it's treacherous over there, though. It's also breaking. One woman, one man killed in a shootout in the East Side community tonight. Police say the 26-year-old victim and three other men drove up to a home near 79th and our 97th, excuse me, and Avenue L and started shooting at people on a porch. Those people fired back, hitting the driver who then crashed into a parked car. Police are currently questioning at least one suspect. On April 6, 2017, Shooter Shells made a significant splash with his diss track titled Death of 150. The music video featuring an arsenal with guns escalated tensions between No Limit and Black Mob. How fucked up is it to y'all and y'all being on the east side? Is it the worst part of Chicago? Be it's real. Fucked up. It's yeah, fucked yeah. up, real shit. Like, it's fucked up. Like, motherfuckers see this interview, certain motherfuckers like, damn, what? Oh, okay. Man, we on his ass too. Whoa, you know? whoa. Yeah. Shit, be like a lot that. of that shit going on. That's why, like, certain motherfuckers don't like certain people. You feel me? Even in my videos, I don't be like, if, unless it's like on some drill shit, I don't want no females in my videos, none of that shit, because it be, it be a few incidents what happen when motherfuckers be in the videos and they end up getting shot. When they really, really like with that shit, they will judge you from supporting me. You feel me? Some of the videos gonna have fun, turn up. And then next thing you know, motherfuckers get up, you know, get into some bullshit. Motherfuckers get on there, like, are you with that shit? Are you supporting them next to me in the video? We, we game bang, you feel me? So we, we got our guns, whatever we go do. Just nine days after dropping Death of 150. Rumors suggest that Shooter Shells allegedly claimed another victim, making it his fifth murder. This time, the target was the father of Lil Wet, known as Big Wet. The consequences of this killing set off a shocking retaliation that claimed four lives. CBS 2 Suzanne Lemonyo reports. Police say Maurice Harris's father, Jerry Jacobs, was a documented gang member who was arrested 47 times in the past. Jacobs was shot to death a day before the quadruple homicide happened near 75th and Coles. I don't have the motive for, for why Jerry Jacobs was killed, 
but I mean, it's uh, a reasonable belief. Jerry Jacobs is murdered, then 24 hours later, his own son goes and kills four people. So obviously, those two incidents are related. 19-year-old Harris is now charged with four counts of first-degree murder. Three witnesses to this quadruple murder identified Maurice Harris as the shooter. Prosecutors say Harris is a documented gang member with an extensive juvenile record. As we've seen too many times before here in Chicago, he's no stranger to CPD. Harris has had 29 arrests. His crimes range from armed robbery to unlawful firearm possession. His first arrest was at the age of 12. If someone would do a deep analysis into this, this ju him as a juvenile, it would be no shock that we're here talking to you today about this. Tips led police to an address in Blue Island where Harris was taken into custody. He's being held without bond. Live in the newsroom, Suzanne Lemonyo, CBS2 News. Erica, Rob. Suzanne, thank you. Motherfucker gotta walk through the land real fast, you know. Still be on maximum security, you know, ain't shit change. Yeah, you know, through the land, I have to, you know, this motherfucker drive, but shit, you know, shoot the shells back, you know, shit from the hit. In the aftermath of Shooter Shell's death, Lil Wet, a member of No Limit, was accused of a shocking crime, allegedly killing four people in one night. The details surrounding this incident are disturbing and the repercussions will echo through the Chicago drill scene. Is it dying down a little bit to y'all? The war over East? No. Okay. Cause they still, <laughs> motherfuckers still slap. Especially with this music shit. Yeah. Especially with the music shit. If, if like I, I said, if, if we was just broke this shit and motherfuckers weren't doing no music, the shit probably die down yeah. unless we slide on them. But if they getting their money, a motherfucker ain't gonna have time for that. But when some, when some motherfuckers doing the music and like the song just did them numbers and shit, and it's getting a lot of they recognition, motherfuckers don't like that. So motherfuckers wanna retaliate. You feel me? Off the song, just off the song. Shoot up motherfucking shells, Mr. Death 150. Yeah, I know I be catching y'all stupid ass. You know? And I got that shit. But you know, everybody telling me to leave the, um, that other shit alone, there's folks on this music. And they right. So I'm gonna do that, you know? Stay out the way. Cause, you know, they wanna see a nigga down. I ain't finna be booked forever. You know? That's what they wanna see. Shout out them fucking them. Shooter Shell's life came to a gruesome end on July 10, 2017. As he entered his car, a white Nissan Altima pulled up and three assailants opened fire, fatally wounding him. The brutality didn't stop there. Shooter Shells was shot multiple times in the face, creating one of the most grisly scenes in Chicago drill history. Now, right now, we're on 81st at the liner, and this is the actual death site of a uh, shot of shit. And if I'm not mistaken, it's these red steps right here. Hold on. Right here. Right here. Yeah. Yeah, but guys, if you really think about the life of Shadow Shells, it was pretty traumatic. I mean, he didn't have any parents. He was a foster child. Uh, I think two of his brothers died. Uh, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good life. And he was actually really talented at rapping. We're gonna walk past it again so we can get a better shot. One second. Right here. Rest in peace, shot of shells. He was gunned down in the streets. 
Very, very unfortunate situation. And I'm out. The FBI was called in to investigate Shooter Shell's murder, and a prime suspect was reportedly Mad Max from No Limit. Despite hey, being caught with a gun shortly after the incident, Mad Max was released due to a lack of subsequential evidence. The investigation took a dark turn, revealing the complex and violent dynamics within Chicago. Okay guys, I want to speak on this situation where reports coming out that Mad Max allegedly snitched on shooter shells for killing his homeboy Simo. I think it was Simo. Um, now I think Mad Max and Simo and them had did something to one of Black Mob remember, I think Jordan or somebody did one something to one of their members over there. Uh, and Shooter Shell got back on the head and he was get, really get back. Shooter Shell was that dude, you know what I'm saying? Y'all really know that if he was alive. Dude really, you know what I'm saying? Hey, that nigga. But um, Mad Max allegedly snitched on him for doing that. Mad Max was said to snitch on a lot of people, but he, don't get me wrong, Mad Max was a killer. He was a street nigga, but all they go out the window when you out there snitching. And he said that he snitched on Shooter Shell for doing that, but Shooter Shells never got locked up. Or he might've got arrested, I don't know. But Mad Max end up killing him, allegedly. That Mad Max number took place of getting him up out of here for doing that. G Herbo, Shooter Shells' longtime rival, responded to his death with subtle references in his music. In his song, Four Minutes of Hell, Part Five, Herbo mocked Shells for his violent demise. The aftermath of Shooter Shell's death will continue to play out in the lyrics of other artists, adding another layer to the ongoing drill war. Oh, my whole book bag smell like doink. Damn. Did y'all stop coming on my page? Get the fuck off my page if y'all finna comment all this lame ass shit. I already know everything that's going on. Leave me the fuck alone. I don't know nothing about nothing, y'all. The police on veto get the f off my page with that gay ass shit. I don't know nothing about nothing about nothing about nothing. Get the f off my page before I don't get on live and block all y'all. First of all, Lil Wet, who allegedly went on a killing spree, further intensified the violence. The details of this night would send shockwaves through the community, raising questions about the cycle of revenge and retaliation that plagued Chicago streets. <laughs> As we conclude this chapter of today's video, the stories of Shooter Shells and Lil Wet serve as stark reminders of the harsh realities these individuals faced. The consequences of their actions continue to reverberate through the city. Well, he is just 19 and charged with a quadruple homicide. This is Maurice Harris. Police say the teen, who is no stranger to law enforcement, gunned down four people hey, near 75th and Coles last week. The reason? Police say it appears to be retaliation for his father's murder a day earlier. Let's well, come before you on this Monday investigation. If we not locked in, for we not locked in, for. I'm not trying to kick it, for. I'm trying to make money, for. Not no friends. I don't even hang my own f friends. I wake up every day. What you recording? Pasto. 
Kubo. <laughs> well, one of the things that you kind of, uh, you know, kind of had a little bit to say about also before you went to jail was the Cairo situation. Cairo yeah. came out, he did an interview with 16 Shot Him, and, you know, he, he kind of went off on G Herbo. You know, I think he said he didn't hold people down, he didn't do some of the things he said he was going to do. You know, you kind of spoke out about it. You know, you know what I'm saying? You kind of said that they shouldn't have brought it to the internet and that they should have kind of kept it with themselves. You know, what, what do you think about that? Exactly what I said. Like, if that's my man's, I ain't finna bring nothing to the internet about him and let the world know. If that's my homie, I'm gonna get up with him and I'm gonna see what's up. I ain't finna do no internet and be like, I'm chasing clout. Hell no, I ain't doing this my homie, I'm gonna check you and I'm gonna get up with you. I ain't finna put it on the internet. That's making it seem like you want some other shit. The world had a front row seat to the violence, beefs, and gang culture these rappers and their homies in the trenches were living. Today, we're going to focus on one of those gangs, their origins, the come up, beefs, and their shocking fallout over a decade later. This is the real story of NLMB. In the east side of Chicago, there ruled a gang that was always in the line of fire. They were young savages that came up in the trenches and became the trenches for the next generation jumping off the porch. The world now knows them as NLMB, aka Never Leave My Brothers, made widely popular by NLMB members Lil Bibby and G Herbo after they blew up in the rap game. Specifically lost anyone who you knew, like family or friends? Yeah, I mean, out here I lost a couple people that I was close to, like family, you know. But, you know, you can't really get too caught up in this, because the moment when you get caught up in this shit out here, that's when you slip up. In the streets, NLMB was officially known as the No Limit Muskegon Boys, which as the name implies, was a merging of two sets, No Limit and the Muskegon Boys. But before they united their forces and became the gang that wasn't scared to go at it with any of the many ops surrounding their territory, they had their own battles to fight that led them to linking into one. No Limit's roots are planted in the soil of the Black Peastone Nation, which was co-founded by Jeff Fort and later on he renamed it El Rukin after he went by his adopted name Prince Malik when he converted to Islam. Jeff Fort originally took over the group Black Peastone Rangers and turned it into the almighty Peastones aka the Black Peastones where the peace stood as a symbol of peace, prosperity, people, and power. But the reality was that they turned out to be a ruthless gang who was even telling the police to their faces that if they killed any of their members, that they would kill police. The criminal enterprise flourished, leaving a trail of bodies and overtook Chicago's youth. And there's not gonna be no killing without killing, gentlemen. With all due respect, definitely not gonna be any killing without killing, you know. And I would like that to be Clear for the now the years passed and the bloodshed kept pouring until it came down to the new generation where Jeff Fort's son, Antonion Fort, began the groundwork that would in time become NLMB. His goal was to take control of a certain part of Eastside Chicago that earned the name Terror Town for the violence and carnage known to its streets. The area was located about 75th and 79th Street and had parents fearing for their children's lives. How, how does the place, you know, get a name called Terror Town? I mean, the name speaks for itself, man. It's a lot of killing, a lot of violence going on. It's terrorism, really, like, and Terror Town, really, when I was growing up, my mother wanted me nowhere. Sure enough, the streets does what it does and claimed his life. No one knows who snuffed him out because on March 28, 1977, his lifeless body was found floating 
in Wolf Lake on the Illinois Indiana border, riddled with bullet wounds. Jeff Fort's nephew, Eric Fort, would eventually take the torch down the line, dragging Terror Town further into havoc. But he too got caught lacking, this time by the cops. Since September 2010, they were doing an undercover operation called Terror Town 2. They had surveillance footage of lines of people purchasing drugs and caught the P-Stones in the act. And in 2011, it was over. They swooped in and arrested Eric Ford and Eric Gothro, AKA Wright, and other prominent leaders of the gang. Still remains. It's called Terror Town, which may sound like something out of a movie, but it's a reality in one Southside neighborhood. You're looking at surveillance video of people buying heroin right on the street. Police say undercover officers have been keeping a close watch on this operation for several months, and now 15 people are under arrest. The dangerous area that police are calling Terror Town encompasses the blocks between 75th and 79th streets, stretching from Yates to Colfax. And as CBS 2's Mike Puccinelli reports, officers aren't done trying to clean up those streets yet. That's them after they had just served an undercover officer and what they're doing with the money. Two accused drug dealers are caught on tape right after police say they sold heroin to an undercover officer. Sometimes the deals go down in vehicles. Other times they happen in what police call powwow lines, where drug dealers use phones to direct junkies to temporary drug stores. Here, heroin users are lined up at 79th and Essex. And they'll pull up, and that's how they serve the narcotics. And then the open-air drug market disappears almost as quickly as it was set up. It operates more like organized crime. These guys were making about $15,000 a day. At the top of this section of the Black Pistons, police say is Eric Goupreau, who was busted along with 14 other gang members. His name formerly used to be Eric Fort. He's a nephew of Jeff Fort. That's the same Jeff Fort who founded the El Rukin Street Gang and who is currently in prison. And although Guthrow adopted a new name, police say he didn't shy away from his old one. This placard was used, police say, at his phony real estate business. Here, members of the P-Stones pay tribute at Jeff Fort's mom's grave. Community members hope the bust will quiet things down in a crime-ridden part of town. So you think this could make a difference? I hope it does. In November of last year, officials say police officer Michael Flisk and a resident were murdered behind Guthrow's house. But they wouldn't say whether any of the drug dealing charges will be upgraded. Do you expect any of these folks to be charged with murder? Again, there's ongoing investigations which I can't get into. So far, one person has been charged with Officer Flisk's murder. I also asked what, if any, role Jeff Ford might be playing in all of this while sitting in federal prison. Police said they couldn't comment on that particular part of the investigation. Who throws uh, Fort sign. That was pretty brazen. It, it certainly is. And they even had a t-shirt emblazoned with Jeff Fort's face. Too. Mm. All right. Thanks, Mike. After that, it was a power struggle. With no one to take control, things got even more out of hand with different groups forming their own cliques. That paved the way for the rising of No Limit home to 79th Street that was split into two groups brought under OGs G. Bull and G. Gill. That was the beginning of savages like Bibby, Herbal, Bibby's brother G. Money, Cairo, Faro, Lil Wet, Crazy James, Job, G. Mansky, and NLMB top hitter Mad Max. The stage was set for one half of what would become NLMB. So how did the Muskegon boys become the other half? The Muskegon boys, AKA the Muskegon block gangsters was a small GD set not far from Terror Town or 79th in Muskegon Ave. The set was allegedly founded by two savages by the name of Dooski and White Bread. Hey, no, hey, hey, yeah, what the yo, yo, man, shut up, man. I'm coming back there. Hey, 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 I'm back. I can't, I can't even f that. I can't even get off the camera. Cause this was cheesy. And I'm gone now. Who that? Eastside Quest, 75 Colfax, Stone Bay Bay. No love, no love. LBC, nigga. All day. Look, the realest nigga alive on Stone Shoe Sheezy, nigga. Let me get my little shot. Hey, shots out's only three feet. Mixtape out. 
Rest in peace, Black on Soul. Yo, Rest it's KO. I robbed that. I robbed 81st and Drake, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no Tell him I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell him I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, fuck that. We don't apologize all day, for shit. Do it all day. <laughs> Hey, your man ass. had six bags. He did have six bags. He had six bags in his mouth. This nigga right here, he need from the five. Okay. <laughs> Dude. It's always crazy how close each of these sets are when it comes to deep and warm with each other. Dudes are literally right down the block from one another. The Muskegon Boys territory was right beside Terra Town, but also another rival set of No Limit in the Lakeside area. Lakeside will become a fearsome op for NLMB in times to come with the cutthroat game, KTS, aka Kill to Survive, matching the terror of Terror Town. But before that, it wasn't like Lakeside wasn't applying pressure on the Muskegon boys. The violence and rivalry between the GD affiliates continued, wanting to expand their manpower and status in the trenches. An alliance was formed between the Muskegon Boys and Terra Towns No Limit to become what we now know as NLMB, the No Limit Muskegon Boys, aka Never Leave My Brothers. Now, you know. Once the alliance was formed, things would take a drastic turn, leading to a trail of bodies and losses for both of them and their ops. NLMB wasn't with following the old ways of the Peastone Nation. As far as they saw it, this was their town, their home, and they were the ones holding it down and keeping the game's legacy alive. So NLMB stopped referring to the area as Terra Town and being affiliated with their predecessors, the Black Peastone Nation. This new generation wanted the credit for putting in work and wanted to stand on their own name. So that's what they did. They call you a new thing, go get you some new things. I can get mad saying me and my crew chain. Tell them to drop dead, then I roll up a new thing. So I can get some hair while I'm rolling the two chains. So they give them dead, trying to get me their boot thing. I get them in, then I roll me a new thing. Yeah, my hurl, my man, everybody know me. The hottest in the land, everybody know me. And my shit is like dirt, yeah, get a nigga murk. I'm real for the work, everybody know me. I'm trying to live this life smoking in the OT. I don't watch on my wife, so nobody smoke me. And you know I got the. Let's do it. Members like G Herbo and Lil Bibby who formed a friendship from young were among those who claimed to have stepped up when the OGs were murked and locked up and when the structure fell apart. The ops were trying to move in and they stood on business on the front lines of the street war fighting for control. By 15, G Herbo and the gang was head first into the gang lifestyle in the streets. They were just kids, but they took on a war that had nothing to do with them. The mentality of the gang culture didn't see it that way. Dudes started beefing before they were born, but now they have to continue to beef with people that live by them. Sadly, that way of life came with many negatives, one being bloodshed. NLMB had a number of ops on all corners, from Black Mob to Pocket Town to the infamous Lakeside set KTS, who branded themselves with the tattoo of a target on their necks. One of the sets turned op was Black Mob. Black Mob and NLB were cool, but they had rules governing their relationship. Any drugs sold on their territory, they had to get a cut. Sounds simple enough from the outside looking in, right? One NLMB member by the name of Vito would make the grave mistake of breaking that code and was dealt with by Black Mob. They didn't kill him, but he was violated. And violation is street term for being taught a lesson. As the story goes, Vito didn't learn from his first mistake and his pride got in the way of common sense and he spun the block trying to take out a black mob member. That was already a bad move, but what made it worse is that he tried to do it with their family members around. Failing to complete the hit, the tables were turned on Vito when black mob retaliated and bodied him. 
News reports state that on April 27, 2009, officers responded to gunfire in the 7800 block of South Exit Avenue about 1.20 a.m. to find Deveus Johnson, a.k.a. NLMB Vito, laying on the sidewalk with a gunshot wound in his chest. A man by the name of Trinity Walton, a.k.a. Black Mob Boo, was convicted for the body and sentenced to 60 years behind bars. There was no turning back after this point and Black Mob was added to the growing list of NLMB ops. They were formidable ops though, especially with Black Mob Marsman shooting shells on the job. While they had to fend off his attacks, they had bigger fish to fry with the Cutthroat Brothers KTS Vaughn and KTS Dre who followed in the footsteps of their pops. They were savages with it, murdering NLMB members and then putting them on shirts to wear around the block and to purposely wearing music videos, adding more insult to injury. That didn't say NLMB was just sitting in the field as target practice. They was taking out ops left and right all the same. Word is their top hitter Mad Max was involved in blowing shooter shells brains out, literally. Investigators believe it was a targeted hit and linked it to gang violence, mainly in LMB, due to the connection in his diss track, Death of 150, released months before he was murdered. Mad Max was murdered later on himself, with Terrell Webb, aka KTS Hell Rail, aka Big Lakeside, being arrested for his murder. They say niggas like. They say they you know they say Zoo OTF Zoo they, they say he get wild and all that shit and then like 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 Melly like you know what I'm saying like the the relationship they had Melly got wild uh, Zoo get wild whatever you know what I'm saying Max was not sliding on niggas like he wasn't he had he wasn't doing that so y'all could need to stop that Max was not doing that Max was not sliding on nobody who's got getting over over busy so stop portraying this nigga like he was a super gangster like. He was sliding on niggas. He was getting up with killers. No, he was not. He wasn't getting up with no killers, man. Y'all need to stop that. Stop that, man. Stop praising that boy like that, man. Look, these. Okay. All right. This isn't like a debate or anything. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, a GSR kit was done. A gunshot residue kit was done on you. Yes, sir. Uh, ballistics test was done on the gun and the recovered shell casing from the scene. Um, since then, we've gotten all those results back. Yes, sir. Also, since then, Little Chris has died on uh, September 3rd. Um, so now this has become a homicide investigation. So, Detective Carlson here is going to read you your Miranda rights. For the gun was a homicide. For a homicide, so. Yeah, this is now a homicide investigation. So, we'll read, we'll read, we'll read you your rights. Hold on, hold on, hold on. One second. Hold on, hold on, hold on. But well, before we talk to you, we say anything. I need to read you your Miranda rights. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Um, for the shooting of little Chris. In 2021, after both shooter shells and Mad Max had passed, unsealed court documents show that the feds had Christopher Jackson, aka Mad Max, as one of the suspects in the gruesome hit of shooter shells. Both KTS Vaughn and KTS Dre were also killed in this ongoing war, leaving their legacy of violence, bloodshed, and savagery in the streets of Chicago. June 23rd, 2015, geeked up and on drugs, Vaughn was murked in the Greater Grand Crossing neighborhood on the south side, as stated by police. The hit happened on the 7500 block of South Ellis Avenue at 2.05 p.m. Reports state that Vaughn was hit multiple times and pronounced dead at the scene. It was never confirmed who carried out the hit, but many speculate NLMB due to the evidence like NLMB Mad Max, aka C Money, who was at the time still alive, changed his IG bio to, quote unquote, Big No Limit The Smoker. 
Ops were waiting patiently for KTS Vaughn's oldest brother, KTS Dre, to post bail and be on the outside once again. In 2021, they caught him just one day after his fiance posted bail and it was personal. Cops found around 64 shell casings at the scene and Dre was riddled with the same amount. I can only imagine what the person in charge of the autopsy had to deal with. Bullets rained down the moment he walked out the Cook County Jail. Chicago police say a 31-year-old man and a 60-year-old woman were walking when two people got out of the car and fired shots, striking them both. The man suffered gunshot wounds to the face and chest and was pronounced dead at Mount Sinai. The woman was shot in the knee and is expected to recover. A third woman who is standing nearby also suffered a graze wound to the face. She is also expected to be okay. Footage from the scene shows several evidence markers placed on the street and near the sidewalk. Now, as for those suspects, police still searching for them this morning. Reporting live from our street side studio, I'm Meredith Barrett, CBS 2 News. Thanks so much, Meredith. NLMB outlived their ops, but that didn't mean they didn't suffer major losses themselves. G Herbo has the names of his homies that he lost in the beef tatted on his arm and even released the mixtapes, Woken to Faiso Land and Ballin' Like I'm Kobe. Dedicated to his homies, G. Faisal and Kobe, who lost their lives in the war. Welcome to Faisal Land. I got the, the name of the tape from my homie. He passed away. His name was Faisal. Called Faisal. We named the uh, hood I just told you after Faisal Land. So, Welcome to Faisal Land. I'm just going to really give him, you know, where I, where I come from, who I am, tell him what's going on out here, you know. Really a story. I'm trying to tell a story from who I am and where I'm from, you know. How I got to where I am, right? Uh, you got a new mixtape that's coming, right? Yeah, yeah, ballin' like I'm Kobe. Ballin' like I'm Kobe. Yeah. Now, that's not for Kobe Bryant. No, that's it? not for Kobe okay. Bryant. That's my homie, Jacoby, who I lost mm -hmm. during me recording Walking to Faisal Land. Like, yeah. him missed me recording my first project. My homie got killed, and we was together. Like, it was, we was outside, like, 4 in the morning, just on the block, chilling, shooting dice, all type of stuff. And he just, you know what I'm saying, pimped off. He was always the type. Just not to ask nobody for shit or mm -hmm. you feel me? We got side cars out there. He ain't asked nobody for a rap. We had a couple blocks over, just walked off, and we heard shots going off, a lot of shots. You mm -hmm. feel me? So we just on there, on the block, and my homie like, man, this is Kobe. Kobe just walked off. We hear all them shots, and we mm -hmm. get to the scene, and I see my homie out there dead, you know what I'm saying, laid out. G Herbo almost got axed out too by the ops when they pulled up and sprayed at him and the homies hitting many of them as they tried to run. Herbo missed a headshot by just a few inches as one of the shots went through his fitted hat and another caught him in his leg. Both of the faces of NLMB, G Herbo and Lil Bibby, made it successful in music, with Herbo going mainstream, dropping top five Billboard albums like 25, and Bibby co-founding Grade A Productions record label with his brother G Money, signing huge artists like Juice World and the Kid Leroy. Still, even with success, it's always something. NLMB started having internal trouble. No Limit Cairo, who was in the famous KTS No Lacking series, where KTS Dre caught him lacking at the McDonald's and punched him out, accused G Herbo of being a fraud in a 2022 interview, saying he didn't live the life he claims and raps, and he left the guys behind. Herbo would respond basically saying he could provide the opportunity, but if dudes don't make the best of it, that's not his fault because he gave the opportunity to make something of themselves. NLMB isn't as close as they were, but at least they outlived their ops. Now it's just time to make good on their chance to level up in life and to make the best of it. So smart boy, you what no limbs. Capo, Kobe, Dito, Faisal, all them niggas, boy. Ah, beat your ass him. So, oh, look, boy, you ain't no limbs. Ah, pop your whole boy. Look, keep talking. Keep talking. Watch me choke you out here. You up, bro? Bro, you know what's going on? Ah, slap your whole. 
I'm seeing with him on a regular. Like niggas, he really f with. You see him? I ain't gonna say his name right there, but he said my little cousin in the county fight across juvenile bodies. When he come home, we we go when he beat this shit, we going to Egypt. Bro I ain't went to Egypt yet. Game shit, man. Since the Ives Awards. Me and Dogs were for game, nigga, home team. Okay, and look, up them the only I promise I could be asleep. In this same hotel, I'll be asleep eight, nine in the morning. Niggas come knocking. Yo! Hey, hey, what the f on? Get up, bro. Why you still asleep? Up them coming to invade my shit. For real, let me tell you, tell you something, nigga. Survivor's remorse, right? I'm here with no yeah. limit, wet him up. You hear me? Yeah, nah, the uh, name speaks for itself. Drip. Quadruple kid, man. Huh? Yeah. Drip game. Drip game. Drip game. Drip game. Drip game. Oh, yeah, I know what that means. Drip game. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> do your oh, niggas well, drench, do you? I gotta go to this video. Yeah, yeah. Do your niggas get drenched with no rain. Well, he is just 19 and charged with a quadruple homicide. This is Maurice Harris. Police say the teen, who is no stranger to law enforcement, gunned down four people near 75th and Coles last week. The reason? Police say it appears to be retaliation for his father's murder a day earlier. On March 29th, 2017, tragedy struck when Big Wet, whose real name was Jerry Jacobs, was fatally shot. The events that unfolded afterward would shock the community and elevate Little Wet into an infamous figure in No Limit. NLMB is a very old set. They go way back to the 70s. However, in the 70s, they didn't go by the name NLMB. Around the 90s, no Limit and Muskegon Boys form NLMB as we all know today. So the two sets move like one and they form NLMB, but they have different territories. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> These are the op sets of NLMB. You got Black Mob, Sino City, Death Row, Lakeside, Pocket Town, Mick Game, Bio Block, RBO, No Good, 358 Game, Gyro City, 800, Frank Block, Blicky Game, EBC, Taco Game, and more. And like I said, NLMB is an old set, so, you know, with them being around for a long time, of course they got a lot of members that's no longer here. But here are some of the notable members that are no longer here. You got Vito, G Fazo, Rock, Simo, Pistol P, Kobe, GBE Capo, Lil Gage, Big Wet, G Slim, Mad Max, and Lil Greg. A lot of people think that Lil Wet is a BD. But in actuality, he's a renegade GD. And the LMB is comprised of a lot of renegade GDs within the set. It's a mixed set. You got BDs, GDs, renegade GDs. A couple of family members of gangsters. I ain't gonna do with the GDs. What the GDs on with me? What you need to ask the GDs? What child on the drench? Throw out all, 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 ask all the bricks. I need on the drench, man. I'm broke. Cause we don't fuck with GDs over here, you know? I'm broke. Take it how you want to take it. That's that drench shit. Once again, take it how you want to take it. I'm broke. During this current period of time, NLMB was in heavy war with Black Mob and KTS. And Shooter Shells is the alleged killer of Big Wet, who was. Lil West's father. My father gotta walk through the land real fast, you know. Still be on maximum security, you know, it's change. Yeah, you know, through the land, I have to, you know, this motherfucker drive, but shit, you know, shoot the shells back, you know. Man, that's that gonna be drop. That's where all my mail go. I yo, did a PPP that didn't go through in that address. 14, 15, whatever. I ain't dead yet. I was locked up. I wish I was home. Yo, I wish come I was on, man. Man, no, don't get on him. Look, then yourself 
talking about a G or four, you five feet, bro. No, folks, the what you was doing? Any time, look. What you was doing? Any time, look. What you was doing? Any time, I didn't punch on you is when we was at Pinky Pinky. Any time, what you was doing? Any time, I didn't punch on you is when we was at Pinky Pinky. Any time, I didn't punch on you is when we was at Pinky Pinky. Any time, I didn't punch on you is when we was at Pinky Pinky. Cause you yeah, don't have so that pain, pain. Any, Look, any time a nigga buck with y'all at school, y'all felt that pain, bro. We only buck once in school and I yeah, got kicked out. Nigga buck with any nigga at school, they felt that pain, no matter what. Hell, hey, right. Raffles, man, you trying to make yourself look good for your fans. Pull up, I'm right here. What you want, pull up a doc? You asked for a doc. What? Who's on? You begging for that motherfucker. Begging for this. Why the fuck you begging for this? I talk to God. God don't make me call him up on oh, y'all be calling for his ass on him. Yeah. Ready to go see his ass, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah, God don't even call y'all ass home. However, the people that that God called, that y'all say God called him, he ain't even calling him. Fuck. Yeah. Hey, I was just thinking, trying to come see him. He's just saying, fuck. Pull up. Pull <laughs> <laughs> up. So did I get the did I get the rerun one? Man, this tape game. No, it's about the rap part, bro. Uh, no, you don't get the rap part, I gave it to you. Hey, Lori, open it. Y'all come on my idea. On that fateful night, March 29th, 2017, at 11 13 p.m., Big Wet was walking on the sidewalk at the 7900 block of South Phillips. When a dark vehicle approached, four men hopped out, shooting Jerry as he tried to flee. Despite making it to the hospital, he was pronounced dead at 3.40 a.m. on March 30th. As a lot of you know, Lil Wet got charged for the murder of four people in what police think was a revenge attack for the killing of his father G-Ball, aka G-Slim, in the aftermath. The police publicly confirmed that Big Wet was a documented gang member, an OG and No Limit, a Chicago gang with a long-standing history of conflicts over control of territories, notably Terror Town. Big Wet had faced murder charges twice in the past. Area that police are calling Terror Town encompasses the blocks between 75th and 79th streets, stretching from Yates to Colfax. And as CBS 2's Mike Puccinelli reports, officers aren't done trying to clean up those streets yet. That's them after they had just served an undercover officer and what they're doing with the money. Two accused drug dealers are caught on tape right after police say they sold heroin to an undercover officer. Sometimes the deals go down in vehicles. Other times they happen in what police call powwow lines, where drug dealers use phones to direct junkies to temporary drug stores. Here, heroin users are lined up at 79th and Essex. And they'll pull up and that's how they serve their narcotics. And then the open air drug market disappears almost as quickly as it was set up. It operates more like organized crime. These guys were making about $15,000 a day. At the top of this section of the Black P Stones, police say is Eric Guthrow, who was busted along with 14 other gang members. His name formerly used to be Eric Fort. He's a nephew of Jeff Fort. That's the same Jeff Fort who founded the El Rukin Street Gang and who is currently in prison. And although Guthrow adopted a new name, police say he didn't shy away from his old one. This placard was used, police say, at his phony real estate business. Here, members of the Peace Stones pay tribute at Jeff Fort's mom's grave. Community members hope the bust will quiet things down in a crime-ridden part of town. So you think this could make a difference? I hope it does. In November of last year, officials say police officer Michael Flisk and a resident were murdered behind Guthrow's house. But they wouldn't say whether any of the drug dealing charges will be upgraded. Do you expect any of these folks to be charged with murder? Again, there's ongoing investigations which I can't get into. So far, one person has been charged with Officer Flisk's murder. I also asked what, if any, role Jeff Ford might be playing in all of this while sitting in federal prison. Police said they couldn't comment on that particular part of the investigation. Who throws uh, Fort sign. That was pretty brazen. It certainly is. And they even had a t-shirt emblazoned with Jeff Ford's face, too. Mm. All right. Thanks, Mike. Less than 24 hours after his father's murder, Lil Wet, also known as Wet Em Up, hit the streets in a fit of rage, seeking revenge. Lil Wet allegedly entered Nadia Fish and Chicken restaurant near his father's death location. In a horrifying turn of events, four men, including 
Two blood brothers were fatally shot. The community was left in shock as Lil Wet's revenge unfolded. Well, he is just 19 and charged with a quadruple homicide. This is Maurice Harris. Police say the teen, who is no stranger to law enforcement, gunned down four people near 75th and Coles last week. The reason? Police say it appears to be retaliation for his father's murder a day earlier. CBS 2 Suzanne Lemonyo reports. Police say Maurice Harris's father, Jerry Jacobs, was a documented gang member who was arrested 47 times in the past. Jacobs was shot to death a day before the quadruple homicide happened near 75th and Coles. I don't have the motive for, for why Jerry Jacobs was killed, but I mean, it's uh, a reasonable belief. Jerry Jacobs is murdered, then 24 hours later, his own son goes and kills four people. So obviously, those two incidents are related. 19-year-old Harris is now charged with four counts of first-degree murder. Three witnesses to this quadruple murder identified Maurice Harris as the shooter. Prosecutors say Harris is a documented gang member with an extensive juvenile record. As we've seen too many times before here in Chicago, he's no stranger to CPD. Harris has had 29 arrests. His crimes range from armed robbery to unlawful firearm possession. His first arrest was at the age of 12. If someone would do a deep analysis into this, this ju him as a juvenile, it would be no shock that we're here talking to you today about this. Tips led police to an address in Blue Island where Harris was taken into custody. He's being held without bond. Live in the newsroom, Suzanne Lemonyo, CBS 2 News. Erica, Rob. Suzanne, thank you. Lil Wet, whose real name is Maurice Harris, was later arrested and charged with all four murders. Police claimed his involvement in the No Limit Gang, connecting the mass shooting to the retaliation for his father's murder. News of the quadruple murders made it to TV, a rare occurrence in Chicago. Police stated that both cases were related and tied to gang conflicts. Maurice Harris was held without bail, with investigators highlighting the clear motive behind the mass shooting. Four months after the death of Lil Wet's father, the alleged killer of his father's shooter shells would then be gunned down himself. July 10, 2017. Shooter Shell's murder was deemed one of the most gruesome murders in Chicago history, with him being shot over 14 times in the face, being left unrecognizable literally at the scene. In a surprising turn of events, in June 2020, after spending over three years in jail, prosecutors dropped all charges against Lil Wet. Despite witnesses supposedly identifying him, the state's attorney found the witnesses' accounts unreliable and insufficient evidence to move forward. Lil Wet was released, seen celebrating on social media. Despite the serious allegations and the sheer scale of the crime, he emerged a free man, raising questions about the reliability of the case and the evidence presented. <laughs> KTS Dre of Lakeside will go on to social media multiple times and say that the four men that were killed in that incident were 100% innocent and didn't have anything to do with anything. Get your face cap. Mm. Got you. Mm. 
Oh uh, yeah, look what. Ah uh -huh. ha. Oh, what are your dead, ho, nigga? Come on. Bitch ass nigga. Came home, boy. I call them innocent ass. I mean, all, shit, all innocent people, boy. That's another thing. Y'all let me be weird as hell. I'm all innocent motherfuckers. Y'all be acting like a motherfucker. Yeah, some shit. Shut up. And the motherfucker ain't cried about none of them people. Well, probably they mama, nigga. Then a year later, July 13, 2021, KTS Dre will finally be released from the Cook County Jail after his girlfriend put up bail and she and his grandmother were on the way to pick him up. KTS Dre would be shot 64 times, multiple times in the face, literally right outside of the Cook County Jail, being pronounced dead on the scene. Man, I'm off of it out and get they expressed out. Damn. Damn. Police say a man who was apparently ambushed after being released from Cook County Jail in Chicago was shot about 64 times. 31-year-old rapper Landre Sylvester, who also goes by the name KTS Dre, died. A police report says he had just been released after being fitted for electronic monitoring and was walking to a waiting vehicle when several people got out of two vehicles and started shooting. They got back into the vehicles and took off. A 60-year-old woman was also shot in the knee. She was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. Right now, police do not have anybody in custody. Like me personally, I didn't like him. We had real beef. Like he said he was gonna kill my son, my baby mama, all type of shit. That's the type of nigga he was though. But still, I don't feel like people deserve to go out heinous like that. But the shit that he was doing led him to that. Cause who wants you that bad that as soon as you bonding out from the Cook County Jail with all these police around, as soon as you walk out the door, it's like they put their freedom on the line. Like, all right, well, we finna do this nigga right here. That was crazy. Like, that was crazy. So. Look. Who did this tattoo? What? Who did this? 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 2024, Lil Wet would be picked up by the feds. Now, it's two different rumors about why he was picked up. One rumor is he was caught with a Glock with a switch. Another rumor is he was being picked up and questioned about the death of KTS Dre. Either way it goes, yes, he has been picked up by the feds and there's been no other news updates. The case of NLMB Lil Wet is shrouded in controversy and speculation. Despite the serious charges, he beat them and walked free. The aftermath of these events add a layer of mystery to Lil Wet's legacy within No Limit. What truly transpired that night remains a puzzle. And you already know what it is, gang. That's another one. Drillers and trappers, trappers and drillers. Hope y'all enjoy it. You know, this been a story of Lil Wet and LMB. Wet em up. You already know. Go ahead, like, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And shit, go ahead and watch that next video. Gang.